In today's video, we're going to talk about the millions, millions, multi-millions of lawsuits, debt collector lawsuits. It will probably surprise you when I tell you the number of how many debt collector lawsuits are making its way through the channels in the United States. This is not something that you want to avoid. These debt collectors are taking this very serious because this is their business model. They're going to go out there, they're going to buy up these charged off debts, repossession uh, loans, payday loans, bad check uh, uh, deposits, um, credit card debt, department store cards, all of that stuff. They're going to buy the, those debts from, uh, from original creditors, package them up uh, in a portfolio and sell them to debt collectors and the debt collectors are going to go out there and they're going to summons individuals to court and if they don't show up to court they're going to get default judgments and then they're going to be either garnishing wages or getting into bank accounts or even taking assets and I've made a video you can look that up on how they will actually seize assets that are not even paid off they have a strategy in place to do that which is something that was very surprising, but when you look at it for what it is, it, it makes absolute sense on uh, stopping individuals from thinking that their assets are protected because they have loans on them. Well, they figured out even a strategy to get assets that have loans against them. I know because I was in your position that you want concrete solutions on being able to manage your way to number one, live a good lifestyle and don't have surprises in your life, protect your money, protect your credit, uh, and be able to move forward without having these types of worries. There's enough stuff that we worry about on a day-to-day -day basis than to have to worry about a debt collector coming from behind your back and throwing this, uh, knocking on your door and throwing this lawsuit in your face from a debt that they purchased that you thought was all done and over with and that you would not have to worry about it. So let's first go through some numbers and then I'm going to tell you about some things that you need to uh, be aware of and then I'm going to tell you how you can help yourself if you find out that you're being sued by a debt collector. So first let's start with the foundation. Millions of lawsuits are filed annually by third-party debt collectors across the United States. A 2022 report by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau stated that between 2010 and 2020, debt collector lawsuits became increasingly common with over 4 million such cases being filed each year. So now, I'm not from 2010 to 2022, I mean to 2020, it's 4 million cases filed every year. So. If you just times that, that's 40 million cases over a 10-year period. 40 million cases. So don't let anyone fool you that debt collectors are not actively going out there trying to file cases. Now, let me tell you something that other people don't let you know about is that the reason why this is a business model is because you better bet from small claims to what's called big money judgment, big big money claims, these debt collectors are paying anywhere between $150 to $250 per case to be filed. So if we just go with 4 million cases times $150 on the low end, we're talking about $600 million. So this is a major investment. So don't be fooled that these debt collectors are not taking this serious. They're not, they might make mistakes on the way that they file them, but they're filing these cases because they want to get money. And so that, so that's, uh, I want to put that front and center because there's a lot of people making videos telling you don't worry about these debt collectors when they are sending you letters in the mail and when they summons you to court. They're like, they're actually saying that. So there's no one that's going to spend $600 million on something that they don't believe that they're going to have a chance at collecting. So now, the volume of lawsuits have increased over time with the significant spike following the 2008 financial crisis. According to the CFPB, these lawsuits surged by more than 50% during that period. 
and many were filed by third-party collectors who brought uh, debts from original creditors at a fraction of who bought debt as a uh, from original creditors as a, as a at a fraction of their value. So, typical debts involve credit card debt. The majority of third-party debt collection lawsuits involve credit card debt. The majority of them. With debt collectors suing consumers for unpaid balances after purchasing the debt from banks and credit card companies, medical debt make up a large portion of lawsuits also, especially in cases where hospital or health care providers sell unpaid bills to collection agencies. And I'm going to tell you that there is no medical bill that you would have to purchase if you follow my strategy, which I have plenty of videos on how to deal with debt collectors who purchase your medical debt. You, it's in rare cases that you would ever have to pay anything, and there's a, a reason behind that. And then auto loans and utility debts. And also, um, that inclu includes uh, cell phone debt and, and uh, 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 satellite uh, or cable bill debt. So these are the types of debts that they're out there purchasing. Now, the, the, the vast majority of these lawsuits end up in default judgments. This means that the consumer fails to appear in court to defend themselves. According to the CFPB, more than 70% of debt collection lawsuits result, resulted in default judgments in the favor of the collector. This often occurs because the consumer consumers are unaware of the lawsuit or lack of resources to contest it. So now I'm going to repeat that phrase. It says that the, this is according to the CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, more than 70% of debt collection lawsuits result in default judgments in favor of the collector. This often occurs because the consumers are unaware of the lawsuit or lack of resources to contest the to contest it. Now, goes back to what I said earlier. Plenty of videos here on YouTube where people are telling you, don't worry about it, don't show up to court, they can't do nothing. I just read to you, CFPB stated, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, this is a department in our government that, you know, that uh, regulates all of this. They say that it often occurs when consumers are unaware of the lawsuit. So that right there, keyword, unaware of the lawsuit, that means that they are able to move forward even if you're not aware of the lawsuit or lack of resources to contest the, the, uh, to contest the lawsuit. That means that you don't know what even to say. Even if you walk in there and you are standing there in front of the judge and they start to ask you questions or they give you the opportunity to respond, you don't even know what to say or what to do. So you... Two ways to lose. Number one, not knowing what to say or what to do, which is an educational, get education or get someone that can help you respond. But there's a catch-22. If the amount, if you were to try to get a lawyer, they're going to probably charge you the, the amount that you could settle the debt for or more than what the debt for. So it doesn't make sense. So it's like you're caught in a catch-22. And then the other side, where you don't, you're totally unaware, and they're still able to move forward. And this is what they're saying. So legal representat re representation. Consumers in debt collection cases rarely have legal res representation. Study by the Pew Charitable Trust found that fewer than 10% of consumers had an attorney compared to nearly 100% of, of debt collectors, leading to an imbalance in outcomes. Now, so now let's talk about the impact. Wages, garnish, property liens, property uh, confiscated, when debt collectors win these judgments. Freezes on bank accounts, liens on property, and property taken to recover the uh, amount that they won in the judgment. Credit score impact, like the domino effect. Lawsuits, and subsequent judgments negatively impact consumers' credit scores. It also affects it when you get the initial charge off on your credit reports. Vulnerable population, low, low income, this is uh, uh, something that I've noticed being in the business all of these years. Low income individuals, minority communities are disproportionately affected by these lawsuits. They're more, more likely to be sued and less likely to have the means to, de to defend themselves. I'm going to say it, and I've said it before. I've seen, and especially during the 2008 uh, 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 mortgage crisis, 
I saw with my own eyes, with the documents, that in middle to upper income neighborhoods, they did not foreclose on individuals' properties. I saw with my own eyes, with documentation, in low income neighborhoods where people had their homes, the mortgage companies foreclosed on those properties. Middle income to upper, these homes were two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars. People went years, years without paying their mortgage. Years without paying their mortgage, no foreclosure action was taken on them. People who did not pay uh, one, two, three, four, five, six months, that's the cutoff date, six months in low income neighborhoods, immediate foreclosure actions on those properties. You you come to your own assessment, I'm j I just gave you the facts on what I saw with my own eyes, with documentation, with people that we uh, were taking on as, as credit repair clients back during that time frame, that time period, 2008 up to 2012. Now, Regulations and Consumer Protections, Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, the FDCPA, the Fair, uh, Fair Debt Collection Practices Act provides protections against abusive practices and third party debt, against practices by third party debt collectors. It regulates how and when debt collectors can contact consumers and pro prohibits harassment, false statements, and unfair practices. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau monitors debt collection debt collection activities and frequently issues reports and updates to ensure compliance with federal laws. In recent years, it has taken action against major third-party debt collectors for unfair or deceptive practices. State-level laws. Some states have additional consumer uh, protections that limit the ability of debt collectors to sue or set stricter requirements for proving that the consumer owes the debt. For example, states like California and New York have passed laws that mandate better documentation for proof from debt collectors before they can file lawsuits. COVID-19 pandemic in impact temporary uh, decline. During the pandemic, the number of debt collection lawsuits temporar temporarily declined as some states impose mandatory uh, moratoriums on debt collection activities and courts were closed for in-person hearings. It also opened up the, uh, when, when that happened, it also opened up the availability for debt collectors to be able to sue you from their location and not have to get an attorney in your state, which it was, a, it, it was something that hurt them but then they saw an opening to where they could do these virtual uh, court sessions because the courts were allowing that to happen. Uh, we got here uh, resurgence post-pandemic as uh, pandemic-related protections expired. Lawsuits began to rise again and debt collectors returned to filing lawsuits in large volumes. Let's go here. Uh, judicial response in Court trends, court overload. Courts have been overwhelmed with the volume of debt collection lawsuits, often creating debt collector, debt collection assembly lines. Many jurisdictions court process process these cases rapidly with limited scrutiny of collection of collector claims. This is something that we make sure that we help our clients with with our debt collection debt collector lawsuit defense services because a lot of these it's just like an assembly line they just have them coming in people either don't show up or people don't know what to do and all they do is just rubber stamp them if you have a defense you will most likely win or get yourself into a great position for settlement in the future um, also th this is why they've been pushing arbitration but you do have a right not to go into arbitration now some notable cases and settlements Encore Capital and Portfolio Recovery. These are two of the largest third-party debt collection debt collectors in the United States. Both have faced legal action by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and state attorney generals against consumers without because they were filing lawsuits against consumers without proper documentation. 
what proper documentation. Like I said earlier, if you don't know what they're supposed to bring to the table, you're just standing there, you know, shaking your head yes or no. It's not just about bringing the amount that they claim that you owe. There's a whole bunch of other documents that they got to bring, and there's a whole bunch of other documents that they got to utilize to prove the amount that they're claiming that you owe. Um, so they were sued for bringing time bar debt, which is debt that's past legal statute of limitation, and for bringing lawsuits without having all the proper documentation. Midland Funding LLC, the uh, this company, the is uh, one of the larger debt buyers, and they have been involved in several class actions for filing false affidavits in support of debt collection lawsuits. So now, these debt collectors are buying these debts for pennies on the dollar, and they lack documentation. So if you find yourself in the situation where you have debt collectors who are suing you in court, I'm inviting you to reach out. Go to my website, The Credit Repair Shop, Dot com in the live chat upload your summons for review because if you have the education number one we can educate you on what to do or we can help you with the information on what you can do to potentially win your case because if you don't know what to do what to say you're just you know out there and we don't want you to be out there. We want you to have the, the information so you can have the am ammunition on fighting back. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch video What Makes Us Different so you can see my eight-point validation process, my two-phase settlement process. If you need your credit reports and scores, go to the website, your order number, three scores. Dot com to grab your TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian credit reports and all three scores. If you have debt collectors coming after you early in the game, grab my three-pack of letters, statute of limitations letter, cease and desist collection activities letter and debt validation letter use it as instructed on the download thank you for your time subscribe to the channel post your questions and comments this is stephen a williams president and founder of the credit repair shop.com